Tumli, the neighbor's cow. Reading Buzz. There was once an intelligent and hard-working courtier named Gopal Bhand in the kingdom of Raja Krishna Chandra, who ruled in Nadia in Bengal. Gopal Bhand was called a Navratna or one of the nine gems of the court because of his intelligence, his wit, and his cleverness in dealing with people. Everyone in the kingdom came to him to have their problems solved. Gopal was also loved in his neighborhood because he was helpful to them and offered them good advice when they needed it. But as luck would have it, Gopal's neighbors were not as clever as he was, and one of them specially was known to be a daydreamer. Both the husband and wife would spend their entire day dreaming about imaginary things and talking about what they plan to do in the future. Although planning for the future is a good thing, these people were so engrossed in daydreaming that they forgot the reality and often argued about matters that did not even exist. This left them with very little time to carry out their daily work and they were poor because they had little time to labor for earning a living. One day, Ramphal, the husband, decided to take the matter in his hand. He told his wife that he was going to buy a cow. She would give him plenty of milk and Ramphal would sell the extra milk and both of them would soon become very rich. Ramphal's wife was very pleased to hear of this scheme. Being daydreamers, instead of working hard to get enough money to buy the cow, they began to think of what they would do when they became the proud owners of a cow. The reality was that they had no money to buy the cow, as they had not enough savings for it. What shall we call her? asked the wife to her husband. We will call her Kamli, said the wife. That's a fine name, said her husband. She will be a fine healthy cow, even if she might cost us a little extra. The money really does not matter, agreed the wife. Now let us see what colour she should be, she added. We will get a shiny black cow and call her Kamli, decided the husband. What a fine idea, dear, added the wife. They spent the rest of the day thinking of the cow. The next morning, the husband woke up early. He told his wife that he would start building a shed for Kamli right away. We will cover the floor with fresh straw and put a thick layer over the roof so she's protected from the sun and the rain, he said. The wife did not want to remain behind with her daydreaming ideas. She added, I will buy some fresh pots from the potter in the village hut for storing the milk that Kamli will give us, she dreamt. She immediately set off for the market and came home with five well-baked earthen pots and showed them to her husband. I have bargained hard for the pots, she told him. Ultimately, the potter agreed to my price and gave me these freshly made pots. They are strong and their surface is extra smooth. The milk will stay fresh and cool in them, she thought. The husband, in the meantime, left for the fields. He took a sickle with him to cut grass and returned home with a large bundle of it. His wife proudly began telling him, The first pot is for storing the milk that Gumley will give us. What about the other four pots? inquired her husband. The second pot will be used to store the butter that will be made from the milk that Kamli will give us, she explained. The husband thought his wife was really clever to have made such elaborate plans with the milk. The third pot will be used to keep the buttermilk after churning out the butter, his wife went on. And the fourth pot will be used for the ghee which I will make with the butter. The husband was overwhelmed at his wife's wisdom and joined her in daydreaming of how blissful their life would be once Kamli came into their house. They began talking of how they would look after their dear Kamli. I will bathe her every day so she is comfortable in her stall, was his wife's idea. I will go early to the fields and cut the moist grass with the dew still on the grass so that Kamli can eat it and give us milk, the husband retorted. They began calculating about the amount of milk the cow would give them. They dreamt of milking her twice each day and filling the pot to the brim. We will sell the extra milk that Kamli gives us, was their next plan.
The day had stretched far into the afternoon daydreaming about their cow, when suddenly the husband remembered about the fifth pot that his wife had bought. Why did you buy a fifth pot? The husband asked out of curiosity. The wife hesitated at first in telling him, but after a time she said, This is for keeping a little of the extra milk aside for my younger sister and her family. The husband was furious on hearing this. Why should you have to give the extra milk to your sister? He asked angrily. After all, she has neither paid for the cow, nor cut fodder for the cow, or done us any favour. What made you think of being so generous towards those inconsiderate people? The wife was angry at hearing her husband talk so unkindly about her dear sister. I do not need to tell you what I do with the extra milk. After all, I have saved the money from the household expenses to buy the cow. I have a right to do as I wish with the extra milk. She answered angrily. The cow is as much mine as yours and so I have a right over the extra milk, said the angry husband. I get up early to get the fodder for Kamli. Moreover, your stingy sister does not give us anything in return. The fight reached fever pitch and the husband in a rage picked up the pot and smashed it. The other pots met a similar fate as the wife joined in the breaking of the pots till they were reduced to bits of shard. Gopal Bhand was passing by their home when he heard the sound of the pots and the loud talk. He went inside to find out what the matter was. The woman spoke up first. Gopal Bhai, I had bought the five pots for keeping the milk and milk products from Kamli. But this man grudged my wish to keep some of that milk for my sister. This woman dares to give the extra milk to my sister-in-law who does nothing for us. I don't see why we should be sparing some of the milk for such ungrateful people. Gopal was very surprised and looked all around for a cow. At last he asked, But where is this Kamli? Have you let her out to graze? The couple explained, We have not yet bought a cow but we plan to buy one. She will be here the moment we can build a shed for her and gather fodder to feed her. We will get her the moment we have saved up enough to buy her. They continued. Have you saved the money to buy her? Inquired Gopal. No, but we will start in a day or two, said the husband. Gopal understood that their daydreaming had reached a new high. He picked up a shard and gave the husband a strong whack on the head. Then he turned to the wife and corrected her saying, You have not yet got the cow, so why are you fighting over her extra milk? But stopping the fight was not enough. Gopal knew he must cure these daydreamers out of their silly habit. He said to them, That cow of yours entered my garden and ate up the beans and gourds in my vegetable plot. I will not allow this to continue, but you have no space in your house. Which garden are you speaking about? His wife taunted. And which cow are you mentioning? Gopal answered back. The wife understood what Gopal was trying to tell them. She felt very foolish at having behaved in this manner. She and her husband learned their lesson and promised Gopal. We will stop daydreaming from now onwards. Gopal returned home satisfied. He had been able to change his neighbor's foolish ways by his clever wit.